And then from that, through the natural mode that these things evolve into each other, you will get all this other stuff to fall out of it. You will all naturally fall out naturally, sequentially. And that is your benchmark is one. And uh, going back to the ancient metaphysical and mystical viewpoints of things, there is only one. One God, one force, one energy, one whatever. And everything else is a subset. The how and the why that takes place is what got me into this stuff, is trying to answer that. How and the why. You know, how did the void become materiality? So, uh, what was the second part of your question? What I just thought of something else that I'd like to share with you that was on TV. A man was raising alligators. He had them in his basement, and he had them for years. And his wife, no one in the neighborhood knew. It was in a very quiet residential area. And his wife got into kind of a sewing group. And they had all these sewing machines. And she had the ladies over one afternoon, and they were all working their sewing machines. And the drone that started, the, the, the sound that was made by the sewing machines started the alligators in the basement roaring. Mm -hmm. And everybody, the people wondered what was going on, and she explained it, that it was the pipes, you know, the, the, uh, yeah, really. the water pipes in the basement, they were having problem with their plumbing. Well, um, this went into a research project, and they were trying to figure out what note was it that started these alligators to do that. So they had a musician, and they thought, well, that particular note was, a, say, a B flat or something on a, and they had a big tuba. And so they went out to and this was all with the cameras. They were doing this live. They went to the, I think it was the Everglades or somewhere where there was just infestations of, of alligators. So they were playing this note on the, on the bridge, and there wasn't one sound. The alligators didn't make any noise. So they thought, well, gee, it's so much for that theory. But a man who happened to be standing on the bridge heard about this thing, and he said, well, why don't you recreate the environment? It was in a basement. It was... It was you know, there must have been yeah. sound waves bouncing yeah. off the wall. So they took the same experiment and went to a, to a zoo where they had the cement walls and all these alligators around, and he played that same note. And lo and behold, these, all of them started this tremendous sound, and it was resonating the same note as the mu musical instrument. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this had nothing to do with it, but it was just... Well, yes, it does. Actually, it does. It's, it's a very it's good analogy. You know, if... We all resonate to those fundamental tones that we're in tune with. You know, whatever our fundamental tone is, mine happens to be D flat. And that manifests in many different ways. For instance, in color, it's kind of an off red, kind of towards the orange colors. And when I first determined this, I said, well, I didn't like that. You know, I like blue. I always bought it in blue. And I said, well, i got to verify or live my research if I'm going to talk to other people. And so I started buying clothes that color and bought a car that color and I started associating with that color and very quickly I began to see that really was my color, not the blue. See, my artificial self liked blue, but my inner self resonated to this other color. So if we can learn these correspondences between the notes and the colors and all the other aspects of our lives and bring all these things into harmony, pretty soon, guess what? We can live in peace and harmony. We can begin to have a decent lifestyle instead of whatever. <clears throat> so you're right. People and items resonate to certain keynotes or fundamental tones. And uh, it behooves everyone to find out what those are and, and uh, adapt it. Question over here. Does this tone have anything to do with the pitch of ringing that you will hear in your ears? And if so, why does that sometimes fluctuate up and down at certain moments? I don't know if I can answer that. <clears throat> I haven't studied the ear like I wish I had time to do. There are There is a gentleman in uh, Washington State somewhere who's doing that research, and he thinks that that's true, that the the canal in the ear is a reflection of the tones of the body. Of course, it has to be. There has to be a concordance with every aspect of your body with your fundamental tone, or your body will start to come apart. And that's, that, is, that is what disease is, is discord. So when your body and all the systems and organi organ organs begin to get in discord with each other, yeah, that's disease, that's right there. So you bring it all into harmony. So 
Yeah, and the pitch of your voice and all these things like uh, Sherry Edwards does are all part and parcel of the whole thing. We are a whole organism in every aspect. In every aspect has to be maintain a relationship as we talked about the relativity of musical tones. Those vibrations have to be relative one to another. To give you a perfect example of this, I ran into a, I had this little theory in the back of my mind about this relativity business. And I ran into an article in, a, in the Sound and Vibration magazine. It's a technical magazine. An engineer had taken a plate, a square metal plate, and vibrated it like I was answering on this other question to where it began to resonate. So he found the resonant frequencies of this plate, and he listed four or five or six of these frequencies, <coughs> which he called modes, vibration modes of this plate. And this article, I've been looking for this article for a long time. Here's an engineer not associated with myself, did this very empirical, very accurate, very precise analysis of this wave plate, a vibrating metal plate. And he had this list of frequencies. And these frequencies didn't have any relationship at all one to another, like we did here, very simply shown how they relate using simple numbers. But I had a little computer program I had been working on for a long time, and I ran those frequencies that he had through the computer program. And every single frequency he found formed a musical interval with the other frequencies, with some other frequency of that set. And they were within a hundredth of a frequency to be an exact musical interval. And that's enough preciseness in any engineering thing to say this is exact, this is what's going on. It was really marvelous that here is a metal plate that wasn't designed to be any kind of musical instrument and all it puts out is musical interval. Well, engineers are taught to read the harmonics. They are never taught about the partials that form between the harmonics, as in the seven musical notes. They're taught to look at the first note and the eighth note, but never the other ones. So they're losing it all. They just don't have access to it. And this simple little experiment that he did and that I matched up with a little bit of arithmetic showed harmony in the midst of his chaos. So that's kind of the neat thing finding. You know, here's here we can find health by looking at it from a holistic viewpoint where a doctor would find disease, which he can't treat because he doesn't know he doesn't know. It's it's that simple. Question in the back. Um, I've been studying the case of Charlotte King, the lady who hears the earth before earthquakes. And uh, duct wall vibration in a lot of buildings bother her, and uh, that apparently is part of the sick building syndrome, is vibration of duct walls. And uh, one thing she hears is eight cycles per second, um, which uh, she just said uh, was um, sets up the alligators. Have you seen uh, photographs of uh, the vibrations of the water dancing on the back of an alligator when it's roaring with that vibration? I haven't seen that particular experiment. It's uh, <coughs> dancing water is what you might call it. Yeah. There is an experiment you can do at home. Though. You can take a, a speaker, turn it up face up, put a pan of like a cake pan, put just a little bit of water in this cake pan and turn your speaker on whatever sound source could be hi-fi or a microphone or whatever and get the surface of this water to vibrate and it will form little spheres of water that will dance around on top of this water surface like you're talking about. It's really fascinating. And then you can empty your pan out and put other things like flour or lycopodium dust or whatever and it is really extraordinary. It's kind of like Hans Denny's tape where he shows these different substances vibrating. It's called visible sound. In the 1860s and 70s, they made all these little neat instruments where they could show sound by vibrating dust pattern. I wanted to comment that Dr. Tomatis of uh, Paris is an ear, nose, and throat specialist who sees the body uh, as uh, developing and around the ear, and it's uh, the response to sound. And uh, that's what I uh, yeah, there was, uh, I think I met him at a conference in England. <clears throat> okay. All right. And they were talking about treating cancer with vowel sounds. And they would sing these various tones.